Okay. So we were asking question right last week. So which one is high in terms of area? Which one is having a bigger area? Is it NAND or uh, AND? The same way, which one will have a bigger area? Is it OR gate or NOR gate? OR gate. <coughs> Okay, so let's understand how we design another you know, schematics part. Okay, um, see any design that we have. Okay, we will have uh, you know the cells which are kind of uh, you know say you will have all the kind of standard cells. So there is something called libraries. Okay, there is something called libraries. So if you go and look at it, it is basically small block, small gates say you have an inverter and you have a buffer and then you have a and and you have a nand and you have or and then you have a nor xr x nor and then dff okay and then d latch okay now remember we also have mux two input mux Max three inputs, I mean, basically two inputs and three inputs. Okay, and then max say four inputs and different things. Okay, so you will have a different, different you know cells, max, and then you have a off adders, and then you have a full adder. So these are all something that we call it like kind of you know they are all pre-designed and they are all kind of optimized for area okay now <clears throat> so how do we what is this area here what is area here when we say area so we know that you know under gate and or gate buffers and inverters but what is this area what is this area meaning so how do we optimize the area let's say when when i say that you know so we have to optimize the area now what does that mean? What do you mean by that area and all of that? Okay, so we will talk about all that today, and uh, also for a given equation, we will try to draw the schematic spot and how do you draw the schematic, and then we will also try to go over the basics of layouts. Okay. Uh, okay. So. Is there any question here on you know, doubt in this particular slide? So we we discussed this particular slide last week itself. Is there anything? Any questions or doubts that you have before I Okay, all right. So, okay, can you guys tell me what is going to be the equation for this particular thing, for this schematic? What would be the Boolean equation for this? Okay, um, <clears throat> the way, you know, let me give you the trick, okay, now, 
remember first thing is always you know we know that there is something called pull up network okay that is pull up network and this is pull down network okay that is pull up and this is pull down okay now having said that first thing is always look at your pull down network okay look at your pull down network okay now let's go back to the previous slide and take a look at it now look at here say this is your you know the line you can say this is pull up and this is pull down okay now what is this going to be we, what is this actually it is in series or parallel series so they series. both are in series which means when both of them are one the circuit discharges it completely correct only then it is going to work so now what is this meaning is it is a dot b okay look at this pull down sorry you look at here you know a dot b now just add bar without anything that is a basic thing that you need to understand so just add a bar pull down whatever the circuit which is in and then just add a bar okay now pull up that would just exactly became opposite so now here a and b are in series now they become parallel now anything here you look at here these both are in parallel now they become series okay so this is the kind of trick that i wanted you to know okay so now since you know this trick now let's go and solve that particular uh, thing okay now you guys tell me what would be the boolean equation or you can say kind of you know z what is that it is going to be z what it is going to be <clears throat> okay i i'm looking at the equations please go in and share the equation Let's try it out. The output will be. Yeah. Hmm, sorry. Can I tell? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Output is equal to. Yeah. B plus C. Z equal to B plus C into A. Okay, so into A plus D. Okay, plus D. The whole bar. Okay. Uh, how do you say that? What is the reason behind? Can you justify? Yeah, yeah. We need to to look on only pull down the column. Uh, first uh, B plus C they are arranged in parallel. Okay. So our nor get like B plus C. B plus C are series with A. So A into B plus C I said. And total A into B plus C are parallel with D. So okay. Okay. Got it. Uh, now what about the one which is on the right side so this is actually correct so let me just quickly go over. see here see b and c are in parallel now say this becomes plus now this both in series with a so that means dot so a dot now b plus c dot a okay and then the whole thing 
is now in parallel with D. So that's how it is. And then you just add it. Okay. Now, what about the one which is in the right side? This is yeah. the one which I was just talking about. Okay. Yeah, A plus B into C plus C, the whole bar. Okay, so here it is kind of, you know, both of them are in C parallel. So A plus B and then C, C plus, plus B. Okay, and then the whole thing, whole bar. Got it? So this is actually the Boolean equation. Okay, now. I want you guys to try out a Boolean equation for I mean, other. So I'll give you a Boolean equation. Now I want you guys to try out. Okay. Now let me just give you this something. Okay. Say for example. Okay, now I don't want you to optimize anything here. Just go ahead and give it a try. Just this is the equation that I have given. Now go ahead and draw the schematic for it. Okay, so whoever have done this, the first one, and now you give a try of the second one. And you don't need to add extra inverter and all, just stick to C bar. So it's like kind of how we have it now. So you don't need to try to add inverter, just use that C bar as it is. Assume, we will assume that there is an inverted signal available. Hello, sir. Your voice is muted, I think. Yes, yes. No, no. I am actually not talking. I gave you the homework and I am waiting for you guys to solve and share the result in WhatsApp. No, one thing is that why you guys are sending only pull down. Who will do pull up? I need the whole thing. See, if you look at this particular thing, right? So it is a complete thing. Yes, sir. Yeah. So I. Your voice is not audible, sir. 
Uh, is it okay now or it cannot hear me? Am I audible or am not audible? Others? Tim, can some of you confirm that my voice is clear and loud? Hello? Is my voice is audible and clear? Yes, unmute and confirm. No? Then only I will know that. You know, otherwise, unless otherwise you guys tell, I won't get to know. Oh, sorry. I think I was on mute. I see. Okay. I didn't realize that I got muted here. I was just talking, talking, talking. Okay, all right. Now I was just trying to, you know, give you guys that, you know. So some of you have pinged me in WhatsApp that only the pull down section. Okay. Now I need a pull up section also. So just send me the whole thing. Okay. Okay, uh, so let me help you guys out. So can someone tell me the equation? What was the equation? A, B, C bar and then plus A, C the whole bar. Correct? Yeah, correct. Okay, now let's draw this line and then bottom. Say it is kind of A and C. Okay. So this is A and then say this is C and then this is going to be kind of say A, B and then say C bar. Okay. Say this is A, B and then say C bar. Okay. Now, so this is your uh, N mass side. It's basically pull down. Now what about on the pull up? What about on the pull-up? Theory should become parallel. Okay. Nice, nice. So how you would, how it is going to happen? Now assuming, say you have got your VDD here. <coughs> so here, this three series they all will become parallel. Okay. So this is A, B and then C bar. Okay. And then these two which are in parallel here now eventually they become series and then So A and then C. Got it? So now I want you guys, you know, when you, you know, after the session, I want you guys to apply zeros and then ones, find out whether this circuit is actually meeting this, uh, you know, Boolean equation. You know, is it like operating as, you know, as, you know, as mentioned here? That is the main thing. Okay. Okay, what was the second one? Okay, I 
I'll just keep it here for some time. In case if you guys want to draw it, you can draw it. Uh, what was the second one? Equation. No, see, because the next step is to go and draw the layout for all this. So that is what the next thing here, okay? What was the second equation that I gave you guys? A bar B plus A, B, C bar plus A, B, C. And the whole bar, correct. See, now do the same thing here, okay? This is the line. Okay, now say this, add it in the series. So A bar B, okay, and this one, this is A and this is B and then this is C bar and then Say this is A, B, and then this is C. Okay, now this all has to be, you know, reverse. So how is it going to be? So assume there are three levels because three parallel things, and then say here V D. Okay, so let's talk about this one first. A, B, C. So it is going to be kind of see. Say here A, B, C. So this first thing is done. And the next one is, I have not optimized it. Uh, so that like optimizing and then drawing it is going to be easier for you. Okay. Say B and then it is going to be C bar and then A bar B. That's it. So this is how we actually draw the schematic for a given equation. Okay. Any questions here? Doubts? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Your voice is not clear, uh, Pradeep. Yes, sir, for not a compliment, uh -huh. uh, how we can yeah, give the signal, like for example, we take an A bar, if we, we need to add no, no, not no, no, get okay. a no. Hold on, hold on. So, I am not worried about this A, B, C you know, or A, B, C bar and things like that. Assume that you have got this A, assuming A signal is available. Okay. Now say there is a A and then A bar. So which means, say here, A and then I am actually going to use this like this. Assuming say complementary signals are available. Okay. Yeah. And we do have a C and a C bar. Now say for example, this is C and then say something like this, okay? Complementary signals okay. that are available, okay? Okay, um, any other questions? And the next topic that I want to talk about is layout part. So that is going to be a little more interesting and uh, important topic. Okay. Sir, one uh, small doubt, sir. Go ahead. Um, so I I have understood about the so NMOS part, but uh, so I didn't understand the above the pull up pull up part. So can you please okay, explain so that? Uh, I think there is something that I have done here. So this is supposed to be a PMOS. What is the meaning? What is that you did not understand? 
So, what is the meaning of CMOS basics? It's a complement, right? See, when you look at your inverter, how it is? CE and then Z. A and Z, okay, and then now this part, pull up part, will give you, you know, say when you give zero, what happens? This is off and this is on. Now, this charges this particular cap that is going to be there here, okay. Now this would actually charge, so that means when you give 0 here, it is on and then it charges. So that is how your output is 1. And when you give input is 1, now the top one is going to be off and then bottom one is going to be on. Now whatever the cap that are charged, completely discharged. Okay, so that is how it is kind of says 0. So anything, the circuit that contributes to a logic one, output logic one that is basically you know called it as a pull up network and the circuit that actually contributes or you know cause you know uh, drives zero or gives zero that is something that we call it as a pull down network is that clear okay Okay, all right. Uh, any other questions before we move to the next topic? Okay, all right. Um, so the next topic is going to be, we will be talking about layers in VLSI and then what is this meaning of layers and then we will be talking about this cell layouts. Okay. So what we will do is we'll take a short break, five minutes, and then uh, we will connect back and we will discuss this uh, shapes, what are the different layers and how they are important, what is the meaning of base layer and what is the meaning of metal layer and how, you know, to form a transistor, what layers you need. So we will be discussing everything. Okay. So we'll take five minutes break. Let's meet at exactly at shop eight. Okay. So what, why is it important to have a different layers? Any idea? By using the flow of data. See, it is, if you look at the way we have our ICs designed, okay, it is all, it is like kind of, you know, you guys have to, you know, I'm just trying to share this particular thing here. So, uh, this is how it is actually designed, okay. Now, if you guys look at it, it is kind of one on top, okay. So, it is a kind of sandwich structure. Assuming, say, this is your first layer and this is going to be a second layer and this is going to be a third layer and this is going to be a fourth layer this is going to be a fifth layer this is going to be a sixth this is going to be seventh and this is going to be eighth and this is going to be ninth see it is exactly something similar to a sandwich okay now that means the bottom layers you know there are a couple of layers which we need to use to form a transistors okay so when you look at your you know the transistor so now if you guys look at right there are two things that we look at one is say this is inverter and say this connects to an under gate okay <clears throat> now if you look at here there are two things you know, this can be divided into two one is say this portion is called cell and this portion is again cell and this is something we call it as a net okay 
this we call it as a net all right and now to form this to manufacture this transistors or the cells we use these base layers okay so these base layers are used to manufacture the cells and then we use all these metal layers to manufacture this connectivity thing which is called nets okay so people in industry you know they call this is as a base layers as a f e o l and this metal layers as a b e o l okay so now what is this meaning is this is called a front end of line and then back end of line now what is meaning is it's basically base layer so these are all the layers that we need to form the cell or to manufacture the cell okay and as i said you know the other layers which is called we call it as a metals they all would be used to manufacture this net connectivity whatever that we have right now in industry okay we have you know the kind of whole process okay say kind of you know the whole soc design flow okay the soc design flow now see the last step is step out okay last step is step out now the step out there are people who do it in one time okay one shot okay and there are people who actually do it two steps i would say instead of one time two time let's say it like an up step okay so one step in one shot they do it and there are some companies follow two shots the what is this meaning is they call it base tape out bto and then they also call it mto it is a metal tape out okay now when we say bto that means only these layers would be uploaded to tsmc or the foundry okay now only the base layers the foundry will take it and then your metal layers can go after 2 weeks okay so why this 2 weeks time that we are getting is by the time this foundry manufacture this mask so the moment you do tape out you know what will happen is so once you do tape out okay now there is something called mask generation the mask generation which is usually be done for each and every layer so by the time they prepare this mask generation for this base layers it would be kind of two weeks and you know in that two weeks you can actually fix if there are any last minute challenge you know changes or you know violations and etc so this is something that you know we call it like kind of bto would be taped done first and then there would be an mto now that is some companies they follow this way and there are some companies they just go and say okay the step out all layer tape out instead of just say tape out you can say kind of you know all layer tape out it's kind of you know we can call it like kind of all layer tape out now okay so let me ask you this one simple thing now you see here how many layers that you might you know approximately your process may have what are the do you see here no how many layers approximately do we have <coughs> how many layers that you will have approximately five that is a hmm sorry 30 30 okay any anyone else want to give a try i lens okay but it depends to, on the layer stack what we are doing okay so just give a try you now what would be the total count approximately 66 okay no i am talking Even about let's like, say so i am talking about the all layers don't look at only you know base and uh, metal so for example if this assume this is a 28 nanometer where i have a 12 metal layers okay 
so this is 28 nanometer i have you know this many layers now how many approximately you know the mass or layers that we will have in this process it will be 100 plus okay anyone else want to give a try Okay, uh, so approximately there would be an 80 plus mask. So in this case, if you guys look at here, okay. <clears throat> so you have got all these things, but remember there would be 80 plus different layers that would be used to manufacture the chip. Okay, it's not just only 5 and 10. Okay, now if you count here itself, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 base layers. Okay, and then... 12 layers okay plus vias so how many vias we will have another 11 vias 12 plus 11 okay by looking at this number so which means it's kind of approximately say 30 layers here itself by looking at this now remember there are dummy layers there are dm0 dm1 dummy metals okay and then you will also have you know different uh, pin layers and all of that so they are all kind of you know put together it would be kind of 80 plus masks would be generated ideally if you ask me like dummy layers pin layers skin layers yeah that's what i'm saying so there are all things put together if you you know when you get a chance to open the uh, DRC rule deck, you will get to know each and everything. Okay. The technology document when you have all the yeah. good. Uh, when you work on the seven nanometers, uh, you are also using 80 plus nanometers layers. Huh? Yeah, I was talking about five, which is kind of 86 or 87 that I have taped out. Okay. Now Let's talk about quickly on the cross sections of the CMOS thing so that like you understand what it is and why do we need all these layers, okay? Hello, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sir. So, mask generation means only depend on base layer or it will be included at base and metal layers? Everything. Each and every layer, there will be a mask which would be generated. Okay. 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 Now, so let's take a look at this particular picture. Okay. Now, so the way you know the manufacturing works is the first step is to get the silicon. Okay. It is called ingot. Okay. It is called ingot. And then that is basically now cleaned and processed and they make it as a wafers. Now after wafer, they go for the whole manufacturing and after the manufacturing, now they cut them into small pieces, which is called a die. Okay. Now your silicon, whatever the base thing that you have is, it's kind of P substrate. Okay. That is basically P substrate. Okay, so this is basically your P substrate, your silicon is basically the P substrate and then on top of P substrate material, you can actually manufacture your NMOS. Okay, you can actually manufacture your NMOS directly. Okay, and then, so to manufacture the NMOS, you need N plus, okay, and then you need poly, okay. There is something called oxide diffusion. It's called OD. Okay, that is what it actually defines your whole transistor. Okay, so it is going to be kind of, you know, say something like this. Okay, so it is going to be say something like this. 
All right. Now, once you manufacture this particular thing, to manufacture a NMOS, what and all we need here. So let's look at these layers and then we'll talk about it. Okay. So the first thing that you need is you don't need N well and P plus. The first thing is you need N plus. Okay. And then you need oxide diffusion. That's called And then you need poly and, <clears throat> and then you need contact. So all these layers you need to form a NMOS transistor. Okay. Now coming back to the PMOS transistors. Okay. Now if you look at here, you cannot manufacture PMOS directly on the P substrate. So you need to make it like kind of N type. So this is something that we call it as a kind of, you know, N well. Okay. Now on top of that N well, you have something called P plus. All right. And then your P plus source and then drain. And then as usual, there is a gate and then again, a OD. Okay. And you know, contacts that we add. So now if you look at here, you need N well and the P plus poly and OD contact to form a PMOS transistors. Okay. Now these layers say kind of now look at here. So you need N well and you need P plus and then you need oxide and then you need poly and then contact. So these layers are needed for preparing you know or, or manufacturing the PMOS okay now that is why we say like kind of you know putting all the layers together these are all what we call it as a base layer okay is there any question or doubt here so that like I can actually clarify making sure you understand this first so that you don't need anything for your whole life yeah so okay. go ahead what is your doubt like my understanding is uh, poly is a connecting layer between the uh, two P plus and in, in that poly we can use contact for I will come to that all later. Right. No, just I'm I'm not asking you to do yeah. anything. Just understand the layers. That's the only thing at this moment. Yeah. Okay. So I would be covering what is connecting what and all of that. Okay. So how a transistor is being formed and which one you have to draw first and which one you have to draw second and everything I would cover. Okay. Yeah, okay. So we are using subtract the P subtract. Okay. Sorry, what is the question? P subtract. P -subtract. P -subtract. Okay. Is oh. mandatory for that uh, basic layer to connect the that is the silicon, no? Where are you manufacturing your ICs? So simple, right? Like assume you are going for a pizza. Now, without the doubt, will they be able to prepare pizza? Oh, no, sir. So the P substrate is nothing but the doubt. Yeah. Sure the first sir. layer. By, by but, but we are mentioned in you know, basic layers on the P substrate. So is it mandatory or not? It's not mandatory. Ah, sure, sir. Thank you, Because it is it is the default the problem the, on top of silicon only you are manufacturing. The silicon itself is a P type. Yeah, okay, sir. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, and so now you need all these layers to ensure that you know your devices are manufactured properly. <clears throat> okay. And then we will use this metal layers for routing purpose. Okay, we will use this metal layers for routing purpose. So upcoming classes, we will look into all this. Okay, so now remember one thing is that this base layers, there is nothing that you have to be worried in terms of direction. Okay, only horizontal direction and vertical direction. So uh, there are certain rules that you need to follow, which is based on the technology. Now, when it comes to metals, they always follow alternate uh, you know routing direction say m1 is horizontal 
okay for example now m2 is kind of say vertical now m3 is horizontal and m4 is kind of vertical now m5 <coughs> is basically now horizontal so it is alternate layer is what we use okay so the question here is you know the homework that i wanted to give you is why do we need to use this method what will happen if you try to follow you know m1 and m2 all of them in same directions what will happen what is the advantage and you know, so more than the advantage what is the disadvantage if you use this <coughs> what will be the disadvantage if you use this power supply is not perfectly working on that sir i am not talking about power that's supply. parallel method no okay so that's your homework you guys go ahead and you know try to explore okay sure sir all right uh, moving on to the next important topic uh, it's called layout okay now this particular thing is the layout of inverter okay so let me just try to make it in both in one place just give me a minute <clears throat> if you look at here this is the inverter that you are seeing here this is the inverter okay now the this is the layout of that particular inverter now remember the layout meaning this is the actual shapes that would be manufactured now simple thing so when we say a transistor okay now this is your just a transistor now how this gets manufactured is say this is od layer that's oxide diffusion and then you have a poly that goes on top of it okay you have a poly that goes on top of it now this is what we call it as a transistor okay this is what we call it as a transistor now basically when you are into you know kind of fabrication and things we call this as a kind of you know where cover the area that is kind of overlapping that is the one which forms a transistor okay now you need to understand so here when you are trying to say pmos <coughs> okay this particular place is what we call it as a pmos and then this is going to be kind of call it as n mos and this is going to be your n mos okay <coughs> now before that let's try to understand so this is just a simple template of your uh, you know the transistor okay now let's go and take a look at it now say simple the first thing is assume this white is your uh, assume this white is your silicon okay now i am going to draw a layout this is the area the cell is going to occupy okay now see now this is going to be your power vdd okay and this is going to be your vss okay now you have drawn this both vdd and vss okay now what is the next thing so as i told this is this white background is say p substrate okay now what is the next thing that you need you need to divide the area which is going to be used for your p mos and then n mos so now this directly you can manufacture n mos on top of this but you need n well okay this is your n well now you prepared kind of you know n well layer now what is that we need the next thing is basically you need the n plus layer for manufacture or defining the n mos section so this is going to be your n plus okay and then you need p plus okay you need p plus for the p region p mos okay that is your p plus now we have actually kind of completed the whole basic things now the next thing is going to be kind of say you need oxide diffusion okay it is kind of say oxide diffusion say this is going to be your od
okay so this kind of od where your transistors are now the first layer first cut layer is drawn now the next thing is this is your poly okay so this is your poly <coughs> now what i have done here is i have just prepared the basic template for my layout i mean the transistors whatever the two transistor i have not done any kind of connectivity at this moment just understand that i have just created one pmos and one in mos that's it i don't have not marked any connections here so now what we will do is let's go and connect them okay the first thing is remember as i said this is going to be a called source and the outputs will be always comes out of drain so this is going to be your drain say so this is going to be your source now this is going to be your gate and this is going to be your gate now pmos now let's go and mark what is source and what is drain okay now say this is source and say this is drain now source is connected to what source is connected to vdd so this vdd now this is connection is done because this oxide layer this is od layer and this is a m1 layer now remember this vdd and vss is going to be in always in m1 layer so now you have to use a connect you know contact to establish this connectivity so your vdd and then your vss they get connected you know using by using the contact we connect them using the contact so now we are done with the source connection pmos source is connected to vdd okay and then what about your nmos source nmos source is connected to your vss okay and then what about the drain part shorted they are actually kind of shorted so now we will just go here and then we will actually short okay so now that shorted one is what we call it as a z pin so that means so this whole thing that we call it as a kind of you know say z okay now what about your gate what about your gate both the gates are shorted and they are called it as a a now what we are going to do now is we will add a contact and then one piece of metal and we will mark them as a a okay so now that is going to be treated as your input pin now this is what we call the as a layout and this area whatever that i have done in the blue is what we call it as a pr boundary so the blue color one whatever that i have drawn it see that is basically pr boundary pr boundary okay now this is the cell that actually you know say inverter and it occupies this much area now if you want to optimize this area so you need to reduce the whole you know number of transistors so this is just a small cell but when you take a look at it the cells could be kind of you know having a sizes like this so this is one cell now there may be another cell which may have you know the width higher but remember all standard cells will have equal height okay so that your automated tool will be able to perform place and route I mean, basically placement so all the standard cells will have a equal height that means your inverter is the same height your buffer will be of same height your flip flop nand nor all the device and all the gates will be of same height okay only thing is same height and different width so the cells can grow in terms of width okay that is the thing all right so now i want you guys to draw the similar thing for your nand nor and whatever the schematic that you have drawn it and learn see the first thing is remember 
you can the advantage with this actually is the source and the drain can be interchanged so now this side i made it as a source this side is source now it's not that you know you, this side is always going to be source now you can actually treat this as a source this as a drain so the mass you know one of the property of the masses the source and drains can be interchanged okay that is the main thing so if it is going to help you to reduce your area you can actually interchange them okay so this is what we call it as a layout and then you know we there, there is a separate people separate team who will do all this okay now i can just show you this exactly the same as what we have discussed you see here this is your p mass and this is your n mass which is going on top and then you have a a which is kind of added with a contact and that is your input pin and then this is going to be your output pin both the drains are shorted and then you have you know all the other supporting layers okay is this layout part clear yes sir yes okay so now whatever that we have done uh, the schematics part so we have done schematics for you know nand nor okay and i want you guys to draw for buffer as well and then these two so total you know say five different schematics that you already have i'm not asking you to draw the bigger schematic and all drop that these schematics i want you guys to draw the layout uh, this week and share it with me in okay this is going to be a homework for the week okay uh so that sounds you know that that sums up the whole cmos basics uh, one thing is pending that you know second order effects that we need to cover i will cover that uh, probably some other time uh, next week onwards we will be getting started with physical design classes okay and we will be having classes from now onwards saturday and sunday both not only on sunday okay so try to cover whatever that we have done in the last 6 uh, weeks likely uh, go through all that and you know we will get started with the directly uh, pd activities from next week that's all for the day i am done uh, if you guys have questions uh, i'll try to answer if not then we can wrap up hi sir hi sir source and drain will be interchanged no sir based on what sir see now let's say you okay let me just give you something okay now you see here this picture right say sometimes yes. your this is source and this is drain now sometimes what we try to do is if this is both of them are kind of you know say simple right look at here this is source and this is source both of them are connected to vdd vdd now the drains are shorted agree yes sir but now this can be done in a different way so how we can do is how we can do this is say now you can treat this as a drain this as a drain okay and this okay. can be a source now you can actually draw the vss like this okay okay sir and vss sorry the vdd can be drawn like this and you can connect it now th this guy can get connected like this got it yes sir so now whichever is going to help now this is a bad way of doing it because compared to see we always try to prefer drain sharing okay, not the sir. source sharing the first preference is for drain sharing so if it is going to help if you try to interchange the both source and drain and if it is actually helping uh, you know in terms of see overall if you look at right your there is something called drain capacitance so your drain capacitance would be less if you have a lesser area okay, okay. so that will actually help in terms of your timing number that's the main thing okay okay yeah. thank you
Any other questions? Okay. Uh, bye, everyone. Catch you next week.